plight and struggle of black people in America. As you know, on Sundays, we do our prominent black people series. And today we have a very, very special guest. And I'm so excited about it, looking forward to this. So mm, let's get started and I'll bring the brother in, have him introduce himself and we'll go from there, okay? Hey, brother, how you feeling today? I'm doing great, brother. Lenny, how about yourself? I'm good, my man. Say, I, I want to get honored in. to be here, brother. Oh, man, I'm honored to have you. And that's what I want to speak on just for a moment before you, you know, get into your talk. Uh, it, this is so great, you know, because nobody knows that me and you have known each other more than 50 years. <laughs> Absolutely. Man, that just makes me giddy to grow up where we grew up. We made it because you know a lot didn't, and wow, to love black people and to have grown up with somebody that love black people too. Uh, you talking about a double blessing? So, man, thanks for coming. Uh, this I, I really appreciate you. Let me so, let me say something about that, Lenny. Um, we've been blessed to have such a long friendship since children. And coming from the neighborhood in the area that we came out of, I always tell people we're here by chance, not by choice. And I say that in parentheses of we had a great upbringing, but a very dangerous one. And, you know, through that gang area that we experienced any given day, Lenny, we didn't have to be here. And I always take I don't take that for because I don't take that for granted. I always say we've been blessed to still be here coming from our upbringing. Mm -hmm. They're coming from the environment that we grew up in. Because like you said, we had great upbringing in our household. But once we left out the house, we were fair game, just like everybody else. Absolutely. Let me get myself comfortable in my little office here. All right. Okay. And what you already know, Tank James Canada, he got victimized, right? You remember Absolutely. that, I'm sure. And yeah. I think then that'd be another day that we can go and give the experience for those who talk about gangs and what we experienced up until the gangs in California with the Crips and the Bloods. I think the foundation started in Philadelphia long before, and that's another topic we can maybe discuss at another time. Absolutely. Now, I'm glad you said that another time because I'm hopeful that you come back many times. Actually. I, I, I will, brother. <laughs> I will. <laughs> they, they might get tired of me. You know, I don't think so. See, I got a lot to say. But see, as you know, this platform is solely to educate our black people on what's happening to black people, what needs to happen to black people, what has happened to black people, and so on and so on. So now they're not going to get tired of you, brother. I promise you. <laughs> on nah. that, there's a lot that we need to discuss. There's a lot of us need to be informed. And if our people are getting tired of these kind of conversations. They should not, because this is how generations and generations are developing to better people. When we no longer hear, our children will know. And I always said, Lenny, it's easier to raise a child opposed to rebuilding an adult. Mm. And that's, that's kind right. of what we want to talk about today. When I said the topic I like to start off with is mindset. Okay. So you want me to get started? Uh, uh, absolutely, uh, Brother Duke. You go ahead and take the floor, man. <laughs> Lenny, somewhere in my young experiences and exposure, somewhere in my, my spirit, I looked around being in our community, in this country, and I always ask myself, why us? What I mean by that, I looked around, I saw other people who can speak multiple languages. I saw the people who had nice things and we had pretty nice things, 
But I ask myself, why us? Why are we at the bottom? Right, right. A lot of people of color in this country get treated so bad. Why us? And that's when you came to me, Lenny. I said, I want to talk about the mindset. Mm -hmm. Because I feel if we can correct our mindset, then we can correct us. Absolutely. That's always tell point. people, yeah. the group to Black America, we're going to use the word America, our history did not start from slavery. However, in this country, what we have been told, it started from slavery. But the mindset that was imposed and inflicted on us still exists today. Mm -hmm. The programming started at birth. And when people talk, how can we make change? If we don't condition ourselves mentally, there will be no change. My mindset changed when I went to college, and I want to mention my college, Lincoln University, mm -hmm. which is all black college. Kwame and Krumay went there. <laughs> we had a lot of great people that went to Lincoln. And yeah. sadly, even as a student, I didn't know many of them that had attended Lincoln long before me. Mm. But it was in Lincoln that I got away from Philadelphia, went to a rural, small little country town, Oxford, Pennsylvania, that kind of shaped my my being. Mm. And what started that, I was given a book from my sister Karen. Mm -hmm. I found out later my brother Kevin gave it his book. Okay. And that book was called The Power of the Self-Conscious Mind. Now, I can't tell you the authors, I don't recall right now. Right. But I have given that book to many people. Many people got little to anything out that book. Hmm. I took that book and I made a manual and I read it chapter by chapter. The reason why I'm bringing this up, that was the first time in my life that I had any education on how to use my mind. Wow. We go through a formal education in America, kindergarten to 12th grade. That formal education, and I like to give props out to Lauren Hill, who came up with the song or the album or CD, the miseducation. Because we have been miseducated since children. We still in the, in the era that we've been educated from the industrial area, but mm. there's no factories in America. Mm. So now the programming start from infants, and I'm gonna go back a little more powerful than that. Mm. I also read a book called Consumer Beware. Now, mm. I'm only gonna mention this book because it talked about the food industry. And the point I wanna make is, with, when I talk about programming, and I'm talking about mindset, we have been conditioned since children or child, and they have learned that if I capture the mind, I'll capture the body and the spirit. Mm -hmm. Example I want to make, there's nothing nutritional in salt and sugar. The food industry took and put sugar in baby food because they figured the mother tastes the baby food first and it tastes good. She would think it would taste good for a child. Mm -hmm. But white sugar or white salt has no nutritional value. So we're praying, we're trained as children to alter our taste buds from kids. We have no desire for sweet sugar or salt. But if a mother gives you that baby food as a child, you're conditioned from that point to think that sugar is the taste bud of choice. Mm. Now, we go into mindset. If you go to a school and they teach you from kindergarten to 12th grade, or what they feel you should know, not what you should know. Most of the things we have learned in our formal education, did we really use it? All you basically need in formal education is really the basics. Mm -hmm. Know how to read, know how to write, and know math. If you know those three things, you can exist and be successful in America. You can be successful anywhere. Mm -hmm. If God gave you the talent that you can see, you can smell, you can hear, if you connect that with your ability to read, write, and do math, you can do anything in America. Right. So when I say mindset, my spirit says, how did this all happen? Hmm. I tell people, if you don't go and find out who you are, where you come from, your mindset will never grow because you're letting someone else influence your mindset. And I have a problem with that. My problem to people who will see this one day, how long do we continue 
to let someone else control our mindset as well as our behavior. When we think about all the problems we got in America, black America, it's based on how we letting someone else control our mindset and our behavior. Mm -hmm. And then they capitalize off of that. And you and I discuss this all the time. They capitalize. Right. We don't right. capitalize. We still fall victim to it. The media, he picked us as always the bad guy, always sure. the criminal, mm -hmm. the thief, the murderer. If you take any race of people in this country and you put them at the bottom, what is your law of life? Your law of life is survival. If I take everything from you, and then you don't want to eat and you don't want to do whatever it takes to eat. That's right. So when they say we are bad people, you have to look at the economics to that. If I take white America and put them at the bottom, they're going to find a way to survive because that's God given. You have mm -hmm. to survive. You have, to have water. you have to have food. Mm -hmm. And if you're in an environment, you need clothing. Okay? That's survival. But we're not taught these things. Not to get away from our subject, but mindset. Absolutely. Some of the things that slavery that they had a mindset for us not to know when we were given what we call freedom mm -hmm. by law there were three things informally that we were not supposed to learn to do and they didn't want us to know one was the art of war and mm -hmm. weaponry they never right. wanted us to know how to protect or defend ourselves the second was the art of food they never really wanted you to know how to farm because if you didn't know how to feed yourself, we still needed them to feed us. And the third one was a very powerful one was the art of mating. Hmm. They did not want you to know the art of mating. They did not want you to know the process of courtship. Uh, what they call soaking the royal oaks. We didn't learn the art of mating. We didn't learn the value of commitment. Mm. When people say slavery, when the master says, I will allow you to get married, okay? Right. And he decides that the marriage was over, he sell you, sell your children, the marriage was over. And he still did what he wanted to do to you in your marriage. So all these things I say, Lenny, to the basis of our existence in America, we have to go to slavery. Because that's where it all started, and that's where the mind still exists. Our behavior is still controlled. And the point I want to make more so important than that, mm -hmm. when our counterparts say we are this, we are that, one thing they never say, has anyone ever taken time to say, let's fix this race of people or group of people? The way we broke them, how can we fix them? America has never said is important enough to fix us. Even we talk about reparations. I tell people, if they gave us reparation, most of us wouldn't know what to do with it anyway. Mm -hmm. We'll just give it back. And why we give it back? Because again, mindset. Right. We're so busy being consumers. We don't think about being investors. We don't think about savings. We don't think about ownership. So if the mindset does not change, the people won't change. And I will make another point. Okay. I listened to Gil Scott Heron and people talk about a revolution. And I heard Gil say the revolution would not be televised. I didn't understand what that meant then. Right. I think <clears throat> as I got older, the revolution would not be televised because the revolution would not be a violent act. We're going to take one race and fight against another race. The revolution is here. It's changing mm -hmm. your mindset. If you change your mindset, you'll change your existence. If mm -hmm. you change your mindset, you will change your economics. The whole, the whole playing ground will be separate. If you change your mindset, then you'll know what value we have to ourselves and what value we will have to America. If America was to say, let's get the most out of these people of color on what we can produce, America, now here's my quote. America can be great again. <laughs> That's a joke, but it can be great. We not even used the way we should be used. Now, I'm going to give you something more powerful, Lenny. 
that a lot of people did not know. Mm -hmm. When slavery ended, and this is something that you can test a lot of people, especially us, and I'm going to say people of color, most of us cannot even tell you when slavery, well, former slavery ended. Many people of color in this country think it happened three or 400 years ago. Mm -hmm. Proclamation was 1863. It hasn't even been over 150 years that we actually been free legally. And when we got that freedom, and I tell people a lot of times people read our history or learn our history, in 1776, Declaration of Independence, and we celebrate that holiday. You know, we go around and have our cookouts and so on. <laughs> Every we year. were slaves in 1776. Hmm. That was their independence, but that was not our independence. When hmm. I tell our people, when we talk about the ending of slavery, slavery ended in a physical form, but the mindset was still the same. Mm -hmm. And here's the biggest dilemma a lot of us don't know. When they decided to say slavery was over, the biggest dilemma after the Civil War was what to do with the former slaves. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know Abraham Lincoln and his, all his little buddies wanted to send us back to Africa. Mm -hmm. And if you tell a person that story, they say, I never heard that before. Well, you haven't been reading. Mm -hmm. The mindset was they did not want to coexist with us. And there's still evidence of that today. When you Absolutely. and I talked this recently about 27 different massacres that happened in America that most black people don't even know about. Right. Most people are just starting to know about Oklahoma, Black Wall Street. Right. But there were numerous Black Wall Streets before Black Wall Street. There was numerous mass murders of people of color in this country that has never been, been talked about. Right, okay? right. A big part of the dilemma was our counterparts did not want to coexist and they still don't want to coexist with us and part of the reason they want to coexist with us because they feel we don't have no value to them and most mm -hmm. of us don't know our value to ourselves and that's mm -hmm. why i said when i wanted to talk to you today mm -hmm. i wanted to discuss mindset Absolutely. if we change our mindset we can change our existence in america when we talk about the violence there's no reason that a brother now you and i got love for each other same neighborhood, so we experience the same thing. Our culture is similar. Our culture is very much alike. Right. But when we have brothers who hate on each other, and these sisters that hate on each other, then we have these shows, these reality shows, that only show fighting and hating and jealousy. That's a mindset that's perfect for the oppressor because he knows that sells in your community. If I put a TV show and I show you peaceful people, intelligent people, communicating, experiencing different ideas, it won't sell because mm -hmm. we've been programmed that we like action, mm -hmm. we like violence, we like things to move real fast. That's not real world, but because our mindset has been programmed to believe that. Now, going a little further than that, I think one of the worst things to hit American soil was the crack. Mm -hmm. When that came, to this country that we then create, mm -hmm. it no longer took our men, it took our women. Mm. We're living in time in America, and we what almost second generation of crack babies now. Wow. So when you take these children that they say are special education, they don't even give the roots to that. They give the root as saying these kids are bad, they're not taught. But it's the mindset. Are right. we really trying to fix Black America? Has there ever been a program today? And you, Lenny, we, we're a little older than probably maybe some of the audience that will see this. We lived through that 60 era where America right. said, hey, these Black people started to know that Black is beautiful and I'm Black and I'm proud. And uh, they started to have riots. Well, we better put some money on the street. We give them programs. Yeah, yeah. Another form of a pacifier. That's what it was. Yeah. They pacified us. Now, where's mm -hmm. that money at? But now America will say we have all kinds of grants that are available mm -hmm. for people of color. Right. Most of us don't even know about it. The mindset has to change, but the mindset comes with understanding 
being informed, and knowledge. Most of us should all be concerned about the knowledge because if we don't have the knowledge, how can we give it to our children and our grandchildren? Right. Now, there was a brother or was a program, and I got to research where I put it at, started probably 30 some years ago. And we can research this, Lenny, but he started a program called the Right of Passions. Okay. He wanted to do something very similar to what the Jews do. Mm -hmm. Those who don't know the Jewish culture, they have a bar mitzvah. A bar mitzvah takes a man who's a little boy and lessons, and he takes him to his manhood, and it's mm -hmm. called bar mitzvah. Okay. And they teach him their religion. They take them to adulthood. We as people of color need that. Absolutely. And I, and I had a person tell me that I'm not African. I don't. I don't. That's, I don't do them jungle people because we don't know our history. Right. But the Jews Holocaust will probably never exist again in this world. But our Holocaust can start tomorrow. First of all, it never really ended. But the Holocaust can be done all over again in America if they chose to. Mm -hmm. Because of the mindset. We don't know who we are. We don't know who, where we come from. And we don't know where we're going. To give a couple people, athletes, entertainers, and show them that they're the wealthiest people in America. Let's talk about the mindset of wealth for a moment. Mm -hmm. If you took all the black Americans, athletes, entertainers, black lawyers, black doctors, take the Oprah, Bob Johnson, Robert Smith, I can go on, and we take all their money and we add it up. What percentage of wealth do you think we still have adding all their money up in this country? Do you have any idea? Well, that's the thing on that. I've heard people say, you know, prominent black people, whoever else, that black people spend a trillion dollars a year. So I'm thinking that's the number. I actually find it hard to believe, but I'll say, okay, it's accurate. So if we actually spend a trillion, I'm saying, okay, we made a trillion. So for 41 million people, I think a trillion dollars annually is pretty good money. Well, to answer that question, Lenny, if I took all your money and every black person in this country money, our wealth, not, not, not expenditure, because what you was talking about, expenditure, what we own and what we create, we still less than 10%. Mm -hmm. So if I added all the millions, all the salaries, all the athlete contracts, patents, tra trademarks, we only still make about less than 10% of the wealth in this country. Now, on your question, the number kind of changes. Mm -hmm. Some people say we gross 1.3 trillion. Some people say we gross 1.7 trillion. On that mindset right there, if we have that kind of money that's circulating, meaning what we earn, mm -hmm. there should be far more black multi-millionaires and billionaires in this country. But because of the mindset, I was thinking that. And, that's it. <laughs> well, you would think that would be the case. But this, yeah. let's look at the history of that. Mm -hmm. Where does the black money come from? It comes from our counterparts. Mm -hmm. Okay? We don't produce anything in this country. So that $1.3 trillion comes from what? Our labor. Mm -hmm. We don't own really anything, and we don't produce anything. So where's that money coming from? Most of it's coming from wages. Mm -hmm. It's coming from contracts for entertainment athletes, black businessmen, and women. So mm -hmm. that's where the number comes from. Mm -hmm. Now, why don't we have more millionaires? Why don't we have even more billionaires of people of color? And the reason why, and going back to the model of Black Wall Street, is because all the money that we earn stays in our community. If it stays in the community, no matter of hours, <laughs> it's gone. Right. Now, you take other you take other races of people, and this is what made Black Wall Street, and most people need to read the history on Black Wall Street. Mm -hmm. 
And reason why they destroyed Black Wall Street, because the dollar stayed in their community. And I don't even want to give the, the answer to that, because I, I like to do things in terms of my teaching approach, is don't listen to what I say, OK? I can give you some information. But I like for people to go seek it for themselves. Right. So I'll just say, as a sidebar, I like people to just go look at the model of Black Wall Street. These people started from nothing. And most people don't even know the history of how Black Wall Street started. And I, if I'm, I'm not always accurate because I don't remember everything. But it was a brother who came out of Texas. Did you know this? Uh, no, no. I, I have no knowledge of the start of Black Wall Street, only the demise. There was a brother that came out of Texas. I don't know if he was in the oil business. I can't recall right now. That decided to go to Oklahoma and buy some land. Okay. That's where the mindset started from. Right. And he joined up with some other brothers who said, "There, we like that. We'll buy some land." That's how that's how the land mass was even created. Right, right. Now, when people read the model of Black Wall Street, you'll see a mindset that was envied by all the other people in their surroundings. One of the reasons why they destroyed it. Absolutely, they knew to create and maintain and circulate the dollar. If your money is not staying in your community. You can't change your community because right. you have no ownership to the community. Mm -hmm. When we talk about real estate in the community, and Lenny, and we grew up on the same block since children, mm -hmm. I was amazed to find out when my mother told me one day before I got into real estate, she said, um, you should buy more houses. And I said, Ma, I don't want these houses. I don't want these raggedy houses. Not seeing the vision. Right, right. We talked earlier about how the Jennifer areas, you only recognize the neighborhood when you come back to visit. Right. But what was amazing about the block we grew up, and we grew up on a great block, and people took pride in that block. You know, on Saturdays, when the weather was good, we had to get out there and sweep and clean. Black parties, painting, and all that. Yeah. But here's the amazing part about that, though, Lenny, and I told my mother years later, when I got into the real estate business, most of the people on that block was renters. They did not own those houses. I can believe that. Yeah. And she was amazed because the pride we took in this neighborhood, on this block rather, mm -hmm. and they were renters. And some of these houses was rented for 20 and 30 years wow. and never had ownership. Mm -hmm. And because of the systems that was put in place, we couldn't even get a mortgage to buy these houses. Sadly. And those houses were relatively inexpensive, which fortunately my parents owned theirs. And I think that house started like $6,000 they bought it for. Lenny, there were people buying them less expensive than that. They were buying them for hundreds at one time. Mm. For hundreds. Mm -hmm. My father told me a story where he and my mother rented a house near 29th and uh, Ridge. They were paying $5 a month for rent. Wow. The man went up a dollar and they said they're going to move out because <laughs> they went up too high. He always wow. tells me that story. I'm like, a wow. dollar? That's amazing, isn't it? So the point is, it was not for you to have ownership because the hustle was, as long as I rent this house to you, you always need me for shelter. I had a relative who lived in a house for 30 years. Renting. Really? That was not included. Right. And they lived in it for 30 years. Mm. In 30 years, they should have owned that house. But he had no intention of selling the house to them because he was Absolutely. making money on renting it. Forever. <laughs> Forever. So I always go back to, again, and I'm using this word numerous times, mindset. If we don't change our mindset and our behavior, we will never succeed as a whole in this country because of our behavior. Mm -hmm. I've always thought everything is linked to psychology. Well, that's what I'm going next. And that's why I said earlier, mm -hmm. if we continue to let our children be educated the way they are, mm -hmm. see, what people don't understand, I'm going to use the Jewish community, for example. The Jewish community may go to a formal school, but then they go to their own schools in the evening time especially okay. when they get educated for their bar, bar mitzvah period in their life. Right, so right. they have their formal education, and then they have their secondary education. We don't educate our children. We rely on the school system to miseducate our children. 
Mm-hmm. We gotta change and it's that. continue to do that. As mm-hmm. long as we continue to do that, we can't change the mindset. Right. For example, I'm sure you heard of what they call the uh, fourth grade syndrome for black boys. They had developed that after about the fourth grade, black boys begin to act out. Okay. And you have you heard that before? I had the only thing that I heard similar. I've heard that they go by the failure rate of third graders to determine how many prisons to build. I've heard about that. Because it leads into the fourth. See, the third grade, okay. they start to diminish. Mm-hmm. So by the fourth grade, and I, I live in this community, I know for a fact, because I saw it almost through experience what they tried to do to my son years right. ago. Right. In my community, when they do their test scores and the children who are not doing as well pull the test scores down. So they don't be available to get the certain amount of money allotted for that school system. Right, so right. what they do, they take those children out of that testing. They, they don't have to include their test scores. Like they can drop the lowest scores or something like that. Well, they, they don't, if they put you in, we call special education, you don't mm. get tests for that score. Mm. So you don't pull the score down. So they create a system to get those kids out of that. Mm-hmm. That's where that third or fourth grade syndrome started from. Because through when they stop segregation and states give money for education, they get money based on those scores. Mm. If your school district scores are low, you're going you go, they're gonna allot less money for you. Okay. So going back to what I say about the mindset, Lenny, mm-hmm. if we don't begin to inform ourselves and stay current, black America is not gonna go anywhere. It's the same oppression today as it was when we was kids. It just might be packaged different. It might have a different bowl, a different color. <laughs> it's the same mindset. Say, hey, Bill, you know what's interesting, man? When you mentioned about the Jewish community. Now, you know, a lot of times, black neighbors, like we come up in a predominantly black ghetto. Like we didn't have Puerto Ricans, right? Like some ghettos in Philly, black Puerto Ricans. We were all black. Now, do you remember? <laughs> when if you were telling somebody something but it wasn't true and they say you lied then you say I have my fingers crossed you remember that <laughs> I mean, you brought this up before yeah, but do you remember that. us doing it though that's what yes. I'm saying yes but guess what this is around the million man march because I just like to go to school sometime I took a class at community college El Centro downtown Dallas right uh-huh. and they were talking about Okay, apparently Jewish people have been subjected to something with Catholicism. Because what they taught, and this was just a one-on-one history class. And what it was, when those Jewish people would take the oath under Catholicism, they would have their fingers crossed, and it was the same thing we did. Since their fingers were crossed, it's like, look, I didn't betray my people or myself, because I had my fingers crossed. And I'm like, say, man, that's where we got that from. I never knew where it came from, but you know, Jews used to live where we grew up. And that stuff trickled down to us. I don't know how, but you know we did it. But that's the root of it. They did that when they were lying about taking the oath to Catholicism. Lenny, you brought that point up, and I never knew that history. Okay? I never knew that till you brought that up. Right? And that's why I say, Lenny, again, years ago, my doctor, my primary doctor was Jewish. And we became very good friends. And uh, we got into a discussion about Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to feel that his whole cause was worse than ours. Oh, man. But when I gave him perspective mm-hmm. from a person of color, it changed his whole mindset because he didn't see our Holocaust. And I said early in this conversation, mm-hmm. our Holocaust still exists. If they wanted to bring it back tomorrow, they can. They don't have to bring it back physically because they already got it going on mentally. Okay. Mm-hmm. The Jewish people know that there will not be a Holocaust ever again what they experienced. Because they make they put, sure of it. <laughs> they put things in place, and they continue to put things in place. We don't have anything in place. You, know, you can't even tell the truth about them without them saying uh, anti-Semitism, <laughs> even if you well, tell them they, the truth. They, they use that anytime you attack them as a weapon, and they're going to fight back on it. Okay. But dudes, you don't even have to be attacking them. You could just be in conversation of truth 
and they take it like it's an attack. But they're going to use that because everything's attacking them. And that's a way to keep themselves guarded. Okay? You right. They say never again. They meant that. <laughs> when you go back to the mindset of the NAACP, mm -hmm. a lot of people of color don't even know the history of that organization. And I'm not going to give out the answers. Right, so right. for discussion, we need to go back to see who even formed the NACCP. Yeah. We well, need to go about, back. Go, huh? ahead. go ahead, dude. Go ahead. Most of us don't even know how it was formed and who really formed that organization. Most of us don't even know what the Singar Award was, if I mm -hmm. pronounce it right. No, Spingar is what it is. Spingard. Singar, right? Spin, S P I N. Singar? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Most of us, at the, the highest. Um, award each year you got that award yeah but nobody even knew who he was hmm. Hmm. nobody knew who he was the masses okay. didn't know <laughs> huh i said the masses didn't know <laughs> so this is why i say lenny you know I, I i get in these conversations and we can go on for hours and hours more of us need to have these conversations because Absolutely. if we don't stay informed we will not be relevant in this country uh the pandemic showed that mm -hmm. the pandemic showed that we had some value because we were essential workers and somebody gotta go do the labor right right if we mm -hmm. don't stay informed to know who we are in our cultures our existence is going back and back and back mm -hmm. okay and then we grew up in a neighborhood where we had some poor whites we had Latinos or Puerto Ricans, we called them then. We had mainly a black community. Uh, you still had putting the same character as Jews as white together. We still had some in our community. But Lenny, when you think about how we came up, and there's another point I want to make about education. Everything existed in our communities, Lenny, was authoritative to us. Everything was authoritative to us. And those people in authority was always the Caucasians. Mm -hmm. From school teachers, because if you recall being a young person, we didn't have too many black school teachers. Store owners, mm -hmm. law enforcement, everything was authority to us. And all the authority was always the Caucasian race. Right. That right. was by design. That was all part of the program. I mean, we didn't come up in the era, Lenny, and we wasn't from the South, even though we had families in the South. Mm -hmm. But the Southerners knew you couldn't even look at a Caucasian eye to eye. Okay. They didn't. But let me ask you this question, dudes. Mm -hmm. And I thank you of the same mindset that I thought we had growing up. Okay, we knew we was poor. We didn't have much. Well, from what I experienced, we thought we were better than Caucasians. How did we think like that when as far as things that mean so much, we didn't have things, but we still thought we were better than Caucasians. I know I did as a child growing up, and I thought all of us did. That was my mindset growing up. So how did that happen that we thought we were better than them? They had everything we had in us. Well, when you give me what your definition is of thinking that you were better. Like we were linked to royalty and they were not. Explain that a little more. Okay, because, you know, fortunately, I guess, and I really think, Duke, this is why I'm so passionate loving our people. I know so much about our black history. I think when you know your black history, it gives you everything you need to be whatever you think you want to be. And see, I've been knowing about our stuff, and I think that's the reason, Duke. <laughs> well, Lenny, you know what? Like I talked to you before, because you had something in your spirit, mm -hmm. down to answer your question or get my spin on the programming of many even including me as a young man mm -hmm. i didn't think i was better than them i actually was programmed some points in my young life that i bought into the belief system that the white man ice was colder that everything they did was better than ours because I looked at they had better homes, better communities. Uh, you got the programming of the TV shows, always showed them in a good light. Yeah. And we had good times. It wasn't until <laughs> Bill Cosby show, the Cosby's, 
right was the first time that they showed black america really in a really positive light now seeing me myself i had a part of my spirit that i saw things different from a lot of other people did i remember mm-hmm. somebody went out their friends we're gonna mention james mcbride Reggie mcbride we were standing on the corner of Columbia avenue and he said norman why are you always serious and i said to Reggie, because i got shit on my mind man <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I know that's right. I got shit on my mind, right? Because for some for some reason, I didn't want to accept <laughs> my existence. Right. And to go to uh, the, the the statement you made, Lenny, the reason why I think you and me and wasn't everybody on, on our on our block, we were broke, but we were never poor. Mm. And mindset, poor is a state of existence. I mean, I'm sorry. Poor is a state of mind. Mm-hmm. Broke is a state of finances. If you are poor and you think you're poor, you're poor mentally. Mm. If you broke, you just don't have no money. Right, but right. you can find a way to get money. And you and believe you will. Mindset. See, your right, spirit right. was different. Like, you know, we grew up the same way, same block. Mm-hmm. So some of us had it. But we had some people that block who thought they were poor. We were just broke. I ain't had no money. Yeah, dig it. And that... Those other people, riches meant nothing to my heart. <laughs> okay. It was all about us. Because I look at the people I saw, dude. I was, see, sometimes when young people be around people, some are focused and inspired. I was inspired. You know, we saw the original Black Panther Party two blocks up the street. We saw these three brothers we talked about fight for us. I've been seeing Black people fight for Black people in Philly all my life. So what and else? And then your, your, your spirit was touched by that. Now, Ooh, now Lenny, you can take another side of that that most people just ignore it all together because, mm-hmm. again, I'm going to keep using the word mindset. Right. They're not informed, they don't care, and they're totally distracted. And the design of this part. of yeah. this programming is to keep you distracted. Okay? Sadly, we're the easiest to, to distract. That's the sad part. We are the easiest people to distract in this nation. Well, part of that, Lenny, is because of the formal education, the misformal, mis, misformal mis- mis- education. Yeah. You ain't gonna keep up this. I'm gonna say formal education, but the misformal education. Right, right, right. right. Even in our school systems, yeah, we're not the same people. We learn different from a lot of people. We have to be stimulated because a lot of things is not our style of learning because we're not the type of people that learn robotic. Okay. They believe in a robotic style of technique. They mm-hmm. believe in the technique. And, and then if we put techniques that I've learned as an older adult or even as a young man coming up, with our natural gifted abilities, mm-hmm. when you put techniques, no one can match us because we God given. School systems was not designed because they were not stimulating for me. Let me ask this question, Lenny. How many things from your formal education or formal miseducation did you really have to use as the adult? But uh, you're talking about 12th grade on back, I think. How much of that information did you use as an adult? But that's what I'm saying. You're talking about 12th on back? Because, you know, I went to trade schools afterwards. 12th so on trade back. School, okay, 12th on back. As far as education? The Iron Man, no, not much to tell you the truth. The education I got at the house <laughs> was more useful than anything I got at the school. <laughs> what did you really need? You need to read, you need to write, you need to lose you no know math so you can count and add and measure. Besides yeah. the ability to read and write, did you ever use geometry once you got out of school? Not really. I mean, shooting a little pool is linked to a little geometry, but... I know what you say. Not, not really. <laughs> so the point is the programming. But I'm going to go even more powerful than that. Mm-hmm. In America, we're not the only one being programmed. Not at all. We're all <laughs> being programmed. Just Absolutely. ours is more vicious. Absolutely. Okay? And I'm going to give you a powerful yeah. word here, Lenny. Okay. When you talk about government, mm-hmm. look at the root of that word, govern. We right. all are governed. Okay? Right. right. We hear the word government, but we all are governed. But the way we're governed compared to our counterparts is a different program. It's much harsher. 
Well, well, I'm trying to be nice. For <laughs> no, I want people, I want people just, to, not to think I'm being. I want people to think I'm being biased because right, man, you know, I'm keeping it real. This real. is not just a black audience of people of color because I want everybody to see this. I'm 62. So you okay? I don't know how long I got left. I, if this was football, I know I'm in the second half, right? What I don't know, I might be in that two minute drill. So I ain't got time to worry about no toes. <laughs> hey, hey, look. <laughs> On that note, I look further in terms of how we all are programmed, okay? Mm-hmm. And I go with the mindset when AE picked us as all the negative things in America, when they go and look at the whole America mm-hmm. and see how other people go that don't make it to the news, it's not a black and white thing. It's a people thing. Absolutely. <laughs> and and correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understandings and reading, one of the main reasons they decided to assassinate Martin Luther King as long as Martin Luther King was influencing and he was nonviolent and he was marching for people of color, mm-hmm. when he decided to make a march for the poor people, black and white. Mm-hmm. Well, Dukes, what I heard about that situation was they didn't really care nothing about who he was marching for on the poverty status. It was when he started trying to mess with their business over in Vietnam. That's when they decide to say you just messed up. <laughs> That's my understanding. <laughs> but how was he gonna mess with their business? I'm saying business? he started speaking against that war. I even saw a video, and I wish I could find it. I haven't been able to, and I got a bunch of them. Where this brother, I saw this myself. Martin Luther King was talking about how he used to be telling the young people, "Look, stop, don't do all that. This, that, and other. Y'all need to do better." He said, but then when he saw, I think the Vietnam War situation, he said that. I will not say anything to our people about what they're doing wrong without me talking about y'all and what y'all doing wrong. Talking about America and Vietnam. That's mm-hmm. when it was, that's when the Caucasian clergy, black clergy, everybody started getting away from Martin. They like, say, hey, you weren't supposed to get into that. And his wow. homies start scattering. That was wow. big business. You don't play in them people's business. You already know. <laughs> I well, think that's what got Martin killed the most. <laughs> we we can go on another day where we really want to get into a lot of the history that a lot of us don't have oh, concern man. but they love. need to have concern and knowledge of okay you can't have concern if you don't have knowledge so they need to get the knowledge of then i think the knowledge of will generate the concern you see what i'm saying so good point good point i agree very good point. sadly most of our people don't even know who carter g Wilson is that is the reason they ever became a black history month and it's almost been 100 years. It's been 96 years. And not 10% of our people even know who Carter G. Woodson was. And we got people coming, like this boy Morgan Freeman been trying to knock Black History Month for years. I've been seeing him. And then this brother- uh, The actor Morgan Freeman? Yes. And that tells me that's why he gets so much work for decades. That brother been getting big work, OK? And then your boy Kanye West here, he is talking about Black Futures Month. I have no problem with that. But why I got to be February? He talking about we going to turn get rid of Black History Month and bring Black Futures Month in February. Now, it's 11 other months. Why you had to pick one that our brother help us have? See, so a lot of us say- yeah, Black do, Future Month? He called it Black Futures Month. You can look it up on YouTube. I watched the whole thing. They even talked about when uh, Negro History Week started. They talked about when it turned into Black History Month, but they never even mentioned Carter G. What's his name? See, so yeah. we, you know we got people look like us that they use and utilize in our community to help hurt us and keep us where we at, sadly. Well, again, Lenny, that can only exist because we don't have the right mindset, okay? If we had the right mindset, we would not need validation from another group of people, okay? So uh, uh, Morgan Freeman opinions won't even matter because you will see he is not part of the mindset okay All right but sadly dudes let me jump in sadly many of us when we like somebody on screen movies tv we think that yeah they're to be listened to because i saw them here saw them there we'll see like this uh uh media thing what they call it, social media now they'll take 
his face and put under him some great words that every black could love. Them ain't even mm. his words. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They do all of that. They use a lot of us to hurt us. And they always have, right? Well, Fred Hampton. You got, you got yeah. to go with, again, it's another method of oppression. Mm -hmm. They can use you who's supposed to be, I, I think I said to you earlier the day we talked before we got on this, mm -hmm. and how, what's the phrase? Uh, when I tell you about the skin color, mm -hmm. uh, we're not all the same, Lenny. You know, you're going to have people who, when they have these little events, they, they put out the people who are the instigators and so on. Yeah. So when you take this fake thing called Hollywood, mm -hmm. actors and actresses, that's what they do. They act. Right, and but a lot of people act. get caught up in their characters just because they seen them as famous. <laughs> well, because again, mindset. They created that. Right. Just like the same thing. I told you I was gonna wear this hat, a Dieter on it today. Mm -hmm. We get caught up with brands. We get caught up in Hollywood. We get caught up with things that we think give us esteem that has no esteem. Mm -hmm. Hollywood ain't never been my heroes. They're actors and actors. I admire their trade. Mm -hmm. Those have done very well in the industry, but that's all man-made. That's made up. Right. Okay. Your 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 politicians, they're not your heroes. They're made up. They have mm -hmm. an agenda to work for man and the government. Now, if we start getting to mindset of the government's money and economics, we get into the mindset of we talked about education. Let's talk about this one term I want to use, Lenny. Mm -hmm. And this term that's very, very powerful because when I was in school, formal education, I really didn't understand the word conquest. Okay. As I got older, as a young man, I studied the word, got the definition, got the true definition. Mm -hmm. Conquest. What does conquest mean to more many of us in this country? And I'm going to ask you the question. What does conquest mean to you? Well, I was going to say, probably a lot of people don't know that word. And I know a bunch of words, but I don't know that one, the meaning of it. I'm talking about, you know, I can hear it used and I'll figure it out, but I don't actually know that word. It means to conquer. Okay. And these are the things, Lenny, just like when we get, they talk about black history. We mm -hmm. get one month, the shortest month for black history. Mm -hmm. Just as we are saying we want black history month, most of us don't even get into black history, period. Okay. Yeah, all year and long, you mean. <laughs> all year long, we don't right. get into black history. Right, we're going right. to take one month and we're going to let them tell us what is black history. Do you really think they care? And I asked you that word, Lenny, because it was a long time before I knew what the word conquest. You might have heard in school, the great conquest. That meant yeah, probably, but just knowing, you know, I didn't know. They polished the word up. Mm -hmm. It means to conquer. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. When we, we, we think about uh, colonizing, most of us don't understand the word. Let me, let, let me jump in real quick, because I don't think you were trying to say that they gave us the shortest month because they didn't give us anything. If it wasn't for Carter G, we wouldn't have. But I just was listening. I'm saying, well, listeners might have misheard that. And I want to be known that nobody I was being sarcastic. I was, I was being sarcastic. Yeah, okay. Because some sadly, some of our black entertainers will come across like telling jokes and they'll act like, okay, we're going to make a serious moment like your boy Chappelle tried to do. And let's say they gave us the shortest month. See, that's a lie right there because nobody gave us that. Our brother saw we needed that and made it happen. And check this out. It started as Negro History Week. But then when did it turn into Black History Month? The same year that they were celebrating 1776 independence from uh, the UK. Then the brother said, OK, well, y'all get that. Well, we need Black History Month instead of a week. You see what I'm saying? The same year. That the brother the said, yeah, see, same year, 50 years later, 26th from Negro History Week. Black History Month, 50 years later, same year, 1776 celebration, the bicentennial of this country. I See? didn't even so know. The brothers be handling business, man, but we don't get credit because if you're expecting them to show our goodness, it's not going to happen. Well, again, as long as we continue to let them control our behavior, the mindset will never change.
Now, Lenny, you know, we came up at a time, I think, when gangs ended in Philadelphia and even prior to that. Well, they stopped in 1975. See, this thing affected my life so much. I know dates, times, situations. It stopped in 1975 in Philly. <laughs> well, well, let me let me put something in parentheses. Okay. It stopped in 1974, 75, mainly in North Philly, because they were still gang war in other parts of Philadelphia. Perhaps, yeah, but I know right where it was impacting us, it stopped. Oh, we, we got impacted by it, but they yeah. when, when when North was stopping to gang war, other parts begin. Like West Philly was late with the gang so, war. So when did gang one actually stop citywide then? I can't really get an exact date on that. And okay. I, I think it was years later. Because when you talk After to people, seven. like I got friends that was from West Philadelphia, mm -hmm. they were still trying to get in the gang war. At that time. See, yeah. well, the way I know it stopped in 75, because, you know, we knew, and that's so blessed for us. We lived right in the midst, and none of us never joined gangs, right? But anyway, we knew who the players were. And I knew who 28 Montgomery was, and I knew who was uh, Ockford Street was, Retina. And I saw the one brother from uh, Alpha Street Gang one day. Oh, man, I was coming up Taney Street, coming up on Montgomery. And right when I hit the corner, the brother was pulling the gun out the trunk. Say, man, I just knew I was shot. I just knew it. Wow. Wow. And anyway, it didn't happen. But that let me know, say, it's different. And then I saw other brothers that you wouldn't see in 20 Montgomery. And they were there. I said, it got to be over because these people don't get to be in this neighborhood. So that's how I knew confirmed that it's it's over. <laughs> so let me let me ask you a question, Lenny. Mm. Did Rizzo stop gangs in North Philly? Rizzo, uh, what year did he die? <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, no, uh, but I'm glad you asked that question. No, from my knowledge and remembering everything, no, who stopped gangs in North Philly? Because I didn't know it didn't stop the whole city. Was the Nation of Islam? And this organization that started called No More Gang War in 74, if you remember that, right? Them two did all the work that I saw. I, I, I was being sarcastic again because if you would let a lot of people tell you Rizzo was instrumental in stopping gang war in Philadelphia. And I had to tell people again to beat. That's far from the truth. That's nothing to do with it, man. He Please, probably wanted to keep going. And what's interesting, even talking about this Rizzo guy, it kind of, in a certain way, <laughs> made me think of this Trump guy because, you know, the average black person didn't like Rizzo. But, you know, there were some black conservatives that supported Rizzo. You know that? But did you know why? Well, one that I did know, which this is going to be interesting. You remember Rod Allen? Yeah. His father supported Rizzo, and the reason was because he said Rizzo is hard on crime, and that's the way his father believed. So that's one personal person I actually know that was black in the ghetto that actually supported Rizzo. <laughs> that's shocking to me, but it had, just like some people, you know, support Trump, which to me, I don't support none of them for real because ain't none of them caring about us. I ain't tricked or fool. Well, go ahead, dudes, because I can get on so many things, man. <laughs> well, go ahead, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Liddy, uh, this going back to what we was talking about, the word My colonizing, okay, uh, going back to the word conquest. Mm. I'm a person that became and loved more history because it gave me a change and a shift in my mindset and understanding myself, understanding the world and understanding my existence. And I tell many people of color, if they go and spend some time, and the easy way to do that, I'm gonna hold it up. Many people think this is just for entertainment. They tools. Now you can Google, you can YouTube. You don't always have to believe all the perspectives because you have to go to numerous people, but you can get so much information off these tools. Absolutely. And because I already had a spirit about one to know, I tell people, go learn history. Don't just learn black history. Learn all history. Absolutely. Learn world history. Because once you learn world history, you have a better, better understanding of not just yourself, but your, of your existence. And any person of color in this country, 
that don't have any interest in learning about the slave trade and understanding the slave trade and how the slave trade affected us and still affect us to this day, to me, their mindset is not ever going to begin because they're not going to study the history of the existence of people of color in this country. That's where my love of history begin. Mm -hmm. And it's important to be an advocate of that who are young because when they learn, then they will learn why their behavior and how they're being influenced of their own behavior under control that they don't even know they're being controlled. You know, we talked before about this generation with kids wearing their pants, falling down their legs. They don't even know the history of where that came from. Okay, We talk about weaponry. Most people of color who do have firearms don't even know the proper way to use a firearm. Okay, they can go buy a weapon, don't even know how to weapon, where they don't know how to break the gun down, they don't know how to clean it, they don't really know how to aim. How many pistol ranges do we have in our neighborhood, Lenny? Do you remember any? No. Because we didn't have any. We couldn't even have guns, okay? <laughs> now, <laughs> so now you got blacks, or well, people of color always say, who have weapons that don't even know how to properly use the weapons, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I tell people, learn the history. When you learn your history, you'll learn yourself. Like I told a person one time, and you may know this, when we talk about the continent of Africa, first of all, most of us don't even know the proper name of that continent. But when you talk about the continent of Africa, and I'm going to use the word Africa as a reference point, the slave trade mainly came from the west coastal parts of Africa. Mm -hmm. We assume that all the Africans knew about the American slave trade. It wasn't until years ago that I found out they knew nothing about the slave trade. When I got to meet more Africans, they like, we didn't know nothing about slaves. We didn't know they were coming out of Africa. They knew nothing about it. We assume that they did. You knew that though, right, Lenny? That the Africans did or didn't know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I never thought on it, but just because you brought it up, I wouldn't think the whole of Africa knew because it's such a vast land, but I would suspect definitely those right in the vicinity knew. And that vicinity that. Lenny, wasn't even that big. Right. Okay? And as big as that continent, we as people of color in this country, and I know I am not correct me if I'm wrong, I was under the notion that all Africa knew about the slave trade in America. It, it never entered my mind on that level, yeah, your name. It just never did. I just know when they say like West Africa, you have this part where the cave where they held them over, like you've seen the movie San Kofa or something like that. And it never dawned on me how extended it was for our other brothers to know. But if I had thought about it, I would think more like what it was that surely they didn't know in Egypt, you know, and uh, maybe what Madagascar or something about it. Well, right. the reason I make the point up, because being who we are in this country, we put Africa under one place as if it was a small place that that information went around. And I'm going to expand on that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not embarrassed to say this. Mm -hmm. And I have had many conversations with people. And they say, wow. When we were learning history in school, Lenny, how old were you when you realized that Egypt was in the continent of Africa? Now, I'm going to answer my part. I was a grown, grown oh, person. Well, not me, because I looked at globes. And when you look at Africa, it says Egypt right there connected. So how could it not be Africa? So I've always I, thought it was Africa. I, I, when I learned about Egypt and I learned about all the Egyptians, my mindset that they were white and it had me think that Egypt was a whole other country, bro. I was a adult. When I realized so, so then you growing up, you didn't look at globes a lot for some reason. I was no, around I didn't get globes. globes. No, no, the uh, globes. No, this, this was in the library at school. This wasn't at the I house. I looked at it, but I ain't paid no attention. I was gonna see, I did because I saw Africa and I know that was us. But see, so, you had that spirit early then. I didn't have it then. Yeah, for I didn't have reason. it. So you I, had I that spirit the, to want to know. Well, what about this? Okay, didn't you do Kelly in the seventh grade? No, I left in sixth grade. Okay. Well, yeah, man, I didn't know that. But what happened was, because you know Kelly was up to the sixth grade at first, right? They started it that year. When you left, they kept us a year. And what they did, they broke it down with four black women teachers. And we was at the corner of the third floor. It was Miss Jackson, who used to be Miss Campbell. 
It was uh, Miss Wiley, uh, Miss Taylor, and uh, I forget the one sister with the apple, but they were social studies. Uh, they were uh, science, English, and math. And they kept us over for a year, and we traded classrooms in that one end corner. And I believe that those black women was trying to help us to transition to junior high, because you know when you first come in the young and you might get some things. But anyway, this one lady showed us videos, man, and I was wondering about some stuff. You talk about embarrassment, I'll get to that one. But the first one was this. They showed us videos of brothers doing that sit-in thing, right, at the lunch counters. And the thing, here I am, I'm 11 or 12, right? So everybody dressed well, the black people at the counter, the Caucasians around them. Everybody looked like, you know, <laughs> civilized human beings. So all of a sudden, though, the Caucasians start messing with the, the black people at the counter. Then they just got rowdier and rowdier. Then it got to the point they start pouring stuff on them, pulling on them, this and that. So I'm there as a child wondering, why are they doing that to them, right? Because everybody looked civilized and they didn't do anything. And then as it went further, my mind is, okay, why are they not doing something about what they're doing to them? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking at some point you're supposed to fight back. So they just showed us. I didn't know the real details. Then they showed us a video of Africans in Africa in, in the natural environment with women dancing with their breasts out. And guess what? I was... It was so interesting to me because everybody in there was black, the children, the teachers, but I still felt some kind of embarrassment seeing them black women with their breasts out like that, not looking like American people. See, so that's yeah, like psychology yeah. is, is deep, man. So that's, like, that, that's very interesting. So your core of interest started then. That's mm. interesting. That's interesting. Wow, I, and I didn't even know it, the interest started. I just know the exposure started. But what's interesting too, though, dude, because I'll see things on Facebook, whatever they'll say. Some people think about Africans see this and like, you know, jungle, whatever. And then, but Africans really that. Well, see, you know how I was raised with my parents' religion, but I've seen where those people, they brought back slides from Africa in the 70s that let you see how modern Africa was in the 70s. See, we see? didn't get that. See, and that might be the reason why I am like I am. I saw some things. And when I saw things, it was impacting me without me knowing it. That's what I think. See, we didn't we didn't get that, Lenny. I think my influence started probably when I was in college. Okay. And um, we had different speakers come up to the school. We learned about apartheid in South Africa. I wrote letters for apartheid. Yeah, I think my interest started, and then he, it's interesting, and I didn't even know that. Why did you stay that year? of seventh grade because I, I left Kelly. We graduated the same year. Yeah, but I wasn't the only one stayed. We had four classes. Reggie was there. Jamie Brown, he stayed. I don't know what happened y'all there. Where did you go? <laughs> no, but th that year... Well, see, you went to uh, John Wanamaker, didn't you? That might be... Right. It. That year, they started the seventh grade at Kelly. Wait a minute. What year... Cause you, uh, you we, we'll talk about it off, off the. Of, okay, I, okay. I'm lost when you stay, cause I, I, I'm just learning this. I thought you had went off the Vox when you left. Uh, yeah, when I left Kelly, but we didn't leave to. We were going to the eighth grade. They kept us there, but That's how it. you didn't get kept and you in the same school, same neighborhood as me? That's cause you wanted to go to that other junior high school. You didn't want to go to Vox. That's evidently is it. Cause that we went. That's interesting, Lenny. Cause I, didn't I didn't even know you were not there. <laughs> Oh. And they did this a great job. And guess what else? It was Miss uh, Campbell that got married, changed the name Miss Jackson. She I'm made a Campbell. comment. She was a scientist. She made a comment that said, you can go to college for four years. I'm just not sure. She either said, not get a job or not get a job in your field. And when she said that on the spot, I said, I am not going to college. And That's I did. I and That's I did. I but check it out. Because, you know, we weren't crazy about school anyway. But I had also decided I wanted to help children in the same grade, seventh grade. I was in uh, the social studies teacher's room. Can't remember her name when I came up with that thought. So I think it just made a difference. And then, yeah, later on when, okay, I wanted to be a, a social worker. So see, when you want to be something, you have to research the mind. Okay, what do I have to do to be that? So you can ask counselors, all that. And that's what I did. So I asked the counselor, what do you have to do to be a social worker? She said, well, first you have to go to college for four years. She was going to, I said, that's enough. 
because I already made in the seventh grade, I'm not going to college. And it was a blessing in disguise because I ended up in trade schools. And I'm glad, see, because if I had been a social worker, then my livelihood is linked to my passion. And you can get screwed like that, see. So I worked in trades with the Postal Service, but I volunteered in my passion. That's so I can't get fired at the schools because I don't work here. I'm volunteering. So that wow, worked out that's perfect. Interesting. And now interesting. I don't work, right? But I know about household things. I know about plumbing, heat, and air conditioning, refrigeration, all that. I don't have to know it, but it's nice to know it, right? Yeah, so say I've been blessed. I don't know why, but I want to be blessing to others. That's all I know. <laughs> well, Lee, just bringing some things to closure. I'd like to thank you for bringing me on. i like to continue to do this another time. Absolutely. Um, I well, would like. For yeah, I would like to see Lenny if we can set up where we can have people ask questions and even put the input uh, input into um, information because we can all learn from each other. Right, and that's good. But the way this situation is actually working out, unless you already have a huge following, you may or may not have people observing and to be able to do the chat thing, but. What they do have the opportunity to do is rewatch it as a recording. And I think they can say things then. But I'm glad you bring up what you're bringing up because I actually have an idea to come up with a, a black think tank. And see, on this uh, deal here, you can have up to 10 people. But I'm thinking a think tank of five would be just right. So I'm hoping we can do that. And definitely, you need to be one of the men. I, <laughs> I, the I, I hope you invite me back. I love to be part of the think tank, Lenny, because I never say I know it all. I know what I know, um, but I can always learn. But the thing of it people. is, as long as a human being realizes that there is not a human being that knows it all, we'll all be all right. And just like, it was interesting, I didn't like it, because when I get off the phone, even though you told me the definition of conquest, I'm still going to look it up on myself, right? But I love words, and I love to learn words. And see, that just shows as fast as I think my vocabulary is, I don't even know conquest or didn't know conquest. But I ain't embarrassed, mad, or none of that because I know I don't know it all. Surely I don't know all the words, but I, and I'm not knocking my people no kind of way, but I believe I know well, more let, words let me, than let me, most. Let me expand yeah. on that. Yeah. When you look at the definition, because that's another topic we'll talk about, which we didn't talk because I want to get into the mindset. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the definition, you got to look a couple maybe sources and read all the different variations because one thing our brothers do, you know, brothers I'm talking about, they're the master of the art of deception. Mm. And that's why they gave that word conquest, because when we were young and was being influenced with words, it was a nice polished word. It didn't seem like it was anything of harm. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm being political as I can be. It didn't seem like it was that bad. You okay. mean as politically correct as you can be? <laughs> as politically correct as I can be. But the word didn't seem that bad because it was who was, who who's it being inflicted inflicted on. So right. a lot of times when we heard the word colonize, when you really start looking at the definition of colonize, uh -huh. it don't sound like a bad word. It's like it sounds like an okay thing. But when you see who's oppressed by being I, challenged, I was gonna say when you don't know the meaning of the word, it seems okay. But see, I can't get to that moment that I don't know that word because I've been knowing it too long. So I tell you something I found out, I was surprised. I knew a lady years ago, she was with the Nation of Islam, she still is. She went on a vacation to Nigeria. And man, I was expecting to hear such black things. And I was so shocked when she come back and told me that they have white Jesus in their house in Nigeria. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding. Let, I was let shocked. Me, let me, now I don't wanna cut you off, but I just wanna thank you on this discussion. Right. Cause it was you who brought that to me, which I paid no attention, nor did I even have a concern or care. When I think many years ago, I think you was one of the brothers who began the momentum of telling us to take these white Jesus out of our households and our churches. And you remember that conversation many years ago? That's interesting because the verbatim part I don't remember, but I remember we talked because you already know a church in West Dallas 
and my first wife had went to had a white. They had a a, a mural. You know how those churches will have we they uh, baptize people. This is in West Dallas, right uh, on Westmoreland, and they had a mural where they baptized a, a Caucasian Jesus and a Caucasian John the Baptist. And I just asked the preacher, old brother too, Reverend Spears, old brother, and I was like. Could we change that to them being black? He said, go right ahead and went to a, it's an arts magnet school, Booker T. Wise. There was a brother over there that could paint, had them come over there, pay them out of our pocket. And I promise you, you already know, it looks more truth black than Caucasian. No doubt. Lenny, where did that go from there? Was that kind of a movement you created? Because for some reason, black America got on board with that. Well, you know, that is so interesting you brought that up, right? Because <laughs> I got a friend, a female that, my ex-friend, that she think that I'm the reason <laughs> that Martin Luther King's birthday became a national holiday. <laughs> because she saw me writing and fighting, right? Just like you saw. But that all makes me think of Nat Turner, okay? When Nat Turner finally got to the position they had him, right? It was a Caucasian dude that I got his slave name, named Gray. And it was something going on in the Carolinas. And they was like trying to see that. Do you got anything to do with that? And that turned out, like, what make you think there's not another human that feels just like me? And that's the deal to what you're talking about. It's many of us. And what's so great, there's more of us than it look like. That's the great part. But there's many black people that love black people like us, dude. Not as many as it should be, but numerically, Definitely millions of black, I think black people. A lot came out the 60 era, especially when our brother James Brown say it loud. Say it loud on Black and I'm Proud. Yeah. The Black Panther movement. Uh a lot, but then a lot of them died off. A lot of that movement died off. Yeah. Uh but Lenny, I want to close with leaving this fruit for thought as a history moment. When I, I think I told you we discussed it, and I know I have it recorded somewhere, mm -hmm. that the black slave coming from Africa was not supposed to be a lifetime. It was mm -hmm. for a duration, a period of time. Mm -hmm. And it was a brother who came from the UK or Great Britain, I forget now, so I don't remember everything on top of my head, that created this slavery to be permanent ownership. I told you about that before, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to, next time we meet up or have one of these, I want to really, really open up the discussion for slavery in America mm -hmm. and put all the information that we can come up with together and we can pass this on to people. Because again, this conversation for me start with mindset. Right. If we don't go back for people of color in this country, and learn that system and understand that system and how it still governs us today, our mindset is not going to change. Okay. And I mentioned that brother because I can't tell you his name. Mm -hmm. I can only tell you the story that that brother was the one who changed the slavery trade to permanent ownership. And I never knew this. Just like mm -hmm. when people don't know the word or the word mulatto, mm -hmm. mulatto is black and Irish. People all think it's white. I mean, we know Irish are white. But right, right. the word mulatto came from black Africans and Irish that were mixed and made it to create another form of slave. Okay? Mm -hmm. And th this type of knowledge, Lenny, to me, if it's taught, will give a foundation of an interest. Because when you start throwing out this kind of information, if anybody got any concern like we do, it will stimulate them because they might as well like, I never knew this. Absolutely. And I never knew about the brother. It was a brother who was a major slave owner, right. America, came from United Kingdom somewhere who bought slaves. And we'll discuss it more. But he was the one who changed the law of ownership because mm. originally you were supposed to work for so long and get your freedom. Mm -hmm. The same way that the Irish slaves, which a lot of people don't no existed. Irish were slaves in this country. They were auctioned off just like we were before we were. 
when you tell people that story, they tell you, I never heard that. No, because you haven't did no history. Okay. And the value of why they started mulattoes was because the African slaves sold for more than the Irish slave. So some, I'm not going to mention who, mixed them and think they can make the value of Irish slaves go up. And then they mm. stopped that practice. So mm. when I tell you, when you learn the history of all the things that have done been done to us, these are the things to teach your children. They're not meant to be angry. They're not to be mad. They're not meant to be have revenge. And I tell people, this is not my spirit. This is not where we're supposed to be. It's for awareness. It's for knowledge. So it can never happen, and it cannot continue to happen us to us. You know, some people say you radical or you got this. No, I'm not a revolutionary. And don't take this wrong. I love America. America can be a great place, okay? We just need to make it a better place for us, people of color. So and I want to put in parentheses. I want to make it known there's no animosity towards America. There's no hate towards America. I just like to see my people mm -hmm. of color get a better piece of the pie, okay? A real piece of the pie. And that's my spirit. You know, you get some people we might bring when we have a, a think tank. I like to put that out from the beginning. We're not mm -hmm. a hate group. We're yeah. not a group that says we do not like America. We just don't like what America has done to us. And we like to see a change. Absolutely. Absolutely. But realize the only way we're going to see a change is we're the ones that make that change. And on that note, Lenny, again, if you want to call this topic, mindset, oh, yeah. brother. <laughs> That's right, dude. Hey, man, thanks again. Thank you for coming, man. I really appreciate you. I promise you, man. Good to see you. I'll be up there for a couple of weeks, the 30th of June to July. Man, I'm looking forward. I'm excited about it. Remind me when you're ready to come. I'm going to show you a good time, Lenny. I already yeah. got it set up. <laughs> Tinker, Raising with Bride, all the guys that we can get together. Right, right. We're gonna right. do lunch, man. Oh, you know, man. I'm looking great some bread, Lenny. I'm, I'm looking excited. forward for you to come, bro. Oh, okay? I'm excited, man. Shoot. And I'm hoping I run into some people up there. Actually, there's a brother that has a barbershop in West Philly on Gerard Avenue. I forgot the hundred. But I'm supposed to get with him while I'm up there. He's got some kind of mentoring organization dealing with uh from uh 17 to 33. I don't know the details, but somehow they're dealing with the court order. So it's they must be in the system. So okay. I'm supposed to give that brother while I'm up there. And I hear there's either other uh, there's even other nonprofits up there. So I want to see what's happening with the community thing, you know, uh, get it going and see what we can make happen for, you know, demonstrating that black on black love. <laughs> Sound like a plan, brother. All right, dude. Thanks again, brother. You take Love care. You, Have a Enjoy the rest day. of your day. Absolutely. Love you too, bro. All right, Lenny. Take All right, care. absolutely. Have a good one. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, that was a great show for me because that brother. We still alive? We still alive? We not live? Oh, we are. Uh, oh, okay. That brother, uh, I grew up around him, uh, right across the street, North Philadelphia, tough town, tough neighborhood, and we both made it out. Uh, we both doing fairly well. Uh, I just want to do all that I can to help my people, help us be united. Because when we unite, it's on. <laughs> I love you, black people. Always have. <laughs> and always will. There's no doubt about that. Black, beautiful people. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Oh, my God.